History of Geography, Wikipedia Audio The history of geography includes many histories of geography which have differed over time and between different cultural and political groups. In more recent developments, geography has become a distinct academic discipline. Geography derives from the Greek, e. af, a geographia, a literal translation of which would be to describe or write about the earth. The first person to use the word geography was Eratosthenes. However, there is evidence for recognizable practices of geography, such as cartography prior to the use of the term geography. The known world of ancient Egypt saw the Nile as the center, and the world as based upon the river. Various oases were known to the east and west, and were considered locations of various gods twelve. To the south lay the Cushitic region, known as far as the Fourth Cataract. Punt was a region south along the shores of the Red Sea. Various Asiatic peoples were known as Retinu, Kanon, K, Haranu, or Kati. At various times especially in the Late Bronze Age Egyptians had diplomatic and trade relationships with Babylonia and Elam. The Mediterranean was called the Great Green and was believed to be part of a world encircling ocean. Europe was unknown although may have become part of the Egyptian worldview in Phoenician times. To the west of Asia lay the realms of Keftiu, possibly Crete, and Mycenae. The oldest known world maps date back to ancient Babylon from the 9th century BC. The best known Babylonian world map, however, is the Imago Mundi of 600 BC. The map as reconstructed by Eckhard Unger shows Babylon on the Euphrates, surrounded by a circular landmass showing Assyria, Eurydo and several cities, in turn surrounded by a bitter river with seven islands arranged around it so as to form a seven-pointed star. The accompanying text mentions seven outer regions beyond the encircling ocean. The descriptions of five of them have survived. Egypt In contrast to the Imago Mundi, an earlier Babylonian world map dating back to the 9th century BC depicted Babylon as being further north from the center of the world though it is not certain what that center was supposed to represent. The ancient Greeks saw the poet Homer as the founder of geography. His works The Iliad and The Odyssey are works of literature, but both contain a great deal of geographical information. Homer describes a circular world ringed by a single massive ocean. The works show that the Greeks by the 8th century BC had considerable knowledge of the geography of the eastern Mediterranean. The poems contain a large number of place names and descriptions, but for many of these it is uncertain what real location, if any, is actually being referred to. Land surveyors determined the exact dimensions of a particular area such as a field, dividing the land into plots for distribution, or laying out the streets in a town, cartographical surveyors made maps, involving finding latitudes, longitudes, and elevations, military surveyors were called upon to determine such information as the width of a river an army would need to cross, engineering surveyors investigated terrain in order to prepare the way for roads, canals, aqueducts, tunnels and mines. Thales of Miletus is one of the first known philosophers known to have wondered about the shape of the world. He proposed that the world was based on water, and that all things grew out of it. He also laid down many of the astronomical and mathematical rules that would allow geography to be studied scientifically. His successor Anaximander is the first person known to have attempted to create a scale map of the known world and to have introduced the gnomon to ancient Greece. Hecateus of Miletus initiated a different form of geography, 
avoiding the mathematical calculations of Thales and Anaximander he learnt about the world by gathering previous works and speaking to the sailors who came through the busy port of Miletus. From these accounts he wrote a detailed prose account of what was known of the world. A similar work, and one that mostly survives today, is Herodotus' Histories. While primarily a work of history, the book contains a wealth of geographic descriptions covering much of the known world. Egypt, Scythia, Persia, and Asia Minor are all described, including a mention of India. The description of Africa as a whole are contentious, with Herodotus describing the land surrounded by a sea. Though, Historically the Indian Sea was thought of an inland sea which was that round of the southern part of Africa is surrounded by the eastern part of Asia by connecting land, which inference only after the circumnavigation of Africa by Vasco da Gama was abandoned by the western cartographers of the 15th century. Some, though, hold that the descriptions of areas such as India are mostly imaginary. Regardless. Herodotus made important observations about geography. He is the first to have noted the process by which large rivers, such as the Nile, build up deltas, and is also the first recorded as observing that winds tend to blow from colder regions to warmer ones. Pythagoras was perhaps the first to propose a spherical world, arguing that the sphere was the most perfect form. This idea was embraced by Plato and Aristotle presented empirical evidence to verify this. He noted that the Earth's shadow during an eclipse is curved, and also that stars increase in height as one moves north. Eudokus of Nidus used the idea of a sphere to explain how the Sun created differing climatic zones based on latitude. This led the Greeks to believe in a division of the world into five regions. At each of the poles was an uncharitably cold region. While extrapolating from the heat of the Sahara it was deduced that the area around the equator was unbearably hot. Between these extreme regions both the northern and southern hemispheres had a temperate belt suitable for human habitation. These theories clashed with the evidence of explorers, however. Hanno the navigator had traveled as far south as Sierra Leone, and it is possible other Phoenicians had circumnavigated Africa. In the 4th century BC the Greek explorer Pythias traveled through northeast Europe, and circled the British Isles. He found that the region was considerably more habitable than theory expected but his discoveries were largely dismissed by his contemporaries because of this. Conquerors also carried out exploration, for example, Caesar's invasions of Britain and Germany, expeditions slash invasions sent by Augustus to Arabia Felix and Ethiopia, and perhaps the greatest ancient Greek explorer of all, Alexander the Great, who deliberately set out to learn more about the East through his military expeditions and so took a large number of geographers and writers with his army who recorded their observations as they moved East. The ancient Greeks divided the world into three continents, Europe, Asia, and Libya. The Hellespont formed the border between Europe and Asia. The border between Asia and Libya was generally considered to be the Nile River, but some geographers, such as Herodotus objected to this. Herodotus argued that there was no difference between the people on the east and west sides of the Nile, and that the Red Sea was a better border. The relatively narrow habitable band was considered to run from the Atlantic Ocean in the west to an unknown sea somewhere east of India in the east. The southern portion of Africa was unknown, as was the northern portion of Europe and Asia, so it was believed that they were circled by a sea. These areas were generally considered uninhabitable. Jabir Ibn Hayyan wrote extensively on many subjects, expanded on the wisdom of the Greek classics and engaged in experimentation in natural science. 
It is unclear whether he was Persian or Syrian, Al Khwarizmi wrote the image of the earth, in which he used the geography of Ptolemy but improved upon his values for the Mediterranean Sea, Asia, and Africa. Ibn Kurdad B authored a book of administrative geography book of the routes and provinces, which is the earliest surviving Arabic work of its kind. He made the first quadratic scheme map of four sectors, Sarab or Sorkab wrote marvels of the seven climes to the end of habitation describing and illustrating a rectangular grid of latitude and longitude to produce a world map. al baqa founded the Baqa School of Terrestrial Mapping in Baghdad, al istakri compiled the Book of the Roots of States, from personal observations and literary sources, Al-Biruni described polar equi as a muthal equidistant projection of the celestial sphere, Abu. Nasr Mansur known for his work with the spherical sign law. Wrote Book of Azimuths which is no longer extant, Avicenna wrote on earth sciences in his Book of Healing, Ibn al-Faqi wrote Concise Book of Lands. Ibn Rustar wrote a geographical compendium known as Book of Precious Records. The size of the earth was an important question to the ancient Greeks. Eratosthenes attempted to calculate its circumference by measuring the angle of the sun at two different locations. While his numbers were problematic, most of the errors cancelled themselves out and he got quite an accurate figure. Since the distance from the Atlantic to India was roughly known, this raised the important question of what was in the vast region east of Asia and to the west of Europe. Crates of Malos proposed that there were in fact four inhabitable land masses, two in each hemisphere. In Rome a large globe was created depicting this world. That some of the figures Eratosthenes had used in his calculation were considerably in error became known, and Posidonius set out to get a more accurate measurement. This number actually was considerably smaller than the real one, but it became accepted that the eastern part of Asia was not a huge distance from Europe. While the works of almost all earlier geographers have been lost, Many of them are partially known through quotations found in Strabo. Strabo's 17-volume work of geography is almost completely extant, and is one of the most important sources of information on classical geography. Strabo accepted the narrow band of habitation theory, and rejected the accounts of Hanno and Pythias as fables. None of Strabo's maps survive but his detailed descriptions give a clear picture of the status of geographical knowledge of the time. Pliny the Elder's Natural History also has sections on geography. A century after Strabo Ptolemy launched a similar undertaking. By this time the Roman Empire had expanded through much of Europe, and previously unknown areas such as the British Isles had been explored. The Silk Road was also in operation, and for the first time knowledge of the Far East began to be known. Ptolemy's Geographia opens with a theoretical discussion about the nature and techniques of geographical inquiry, and then moves to detailed descriptions of much the known world. Ptolemy lists a huge number of cities, tribes, and sites and places them in the world. It is uncertain what Ptolemy's names correspond to in the modern world, and a vast amount of scholarship has gone into trying to link Ptolemaic descriptions to known locations. Babylon It was the Romans who made far more extensive practical use of geography and maps. The Roman transportation system, consisting of 55,000 miles of roads, could not have been designed without the use of geographical systems of measurement and triangulation. The Cursus Publicus, a department of the Roman government devoted to transportation, employed full-time grammatici. The surveyor's job was to gather topographical information and then to determine the straightest possible route where a road might be built. 
Instruments and principles used included sundials for determining direction, theodolites for measuring horizontal angles, and triangulation without which the creation of perfectly straight stretches, some as long as 35 miles, would have been impossible. During the Greco-Roman era, those who performed geographical work could be divided into four categories. Around AD 400 a scroll map called the Puddinger Table was made of the known world, featuring the Roman road network. Besides the Roman Empire which at that time spanned from Britain to the Middle East and Africa, the map includes India, Sri Lanka, and China. Cities are demarcated using hundreds of symbols. It measures 1.12 feet high and 22.15 feet long. The tools and principles of geography used by the Romans would be closely followed with little practical improvement for the next 700 years. A vast corpus of Indian texts embraced the study of geography. The Vedas and Puranas contain elaborate descriptions of rivers and mountains and treat the relationship between physical and human elements. According to religious scholar Diana Eck, a notable feature of geography in India is its interweaving with Hindu mythology. No matter where one goes in India, one will find a landscape in which mountains, rivers, forests, and villages are elaborately linked to the stories and gods of Indian culture. Every place in this vast country has its story, and conversely, every story of Hindu myth and legend has its place. The geographers of ancient India put forward theories regarding the origin of the earth. They theorized that the Earth was formed by the solidification of gaseous matter and that the Earth's crust is composed of hard rocks, clay, and sand. Theories were also propounded to explain earthquakes and it was assumed that Earth, air, and water combined to cause earthquakes. The Artha Shastra, a compendium by Kotilya contains a range of geographical and statistical information about the various regions of India. The composers of the Puranas divided the known world into seven continents of Dwipas, Jambudwipa, Krunka Dwipa, Kasha Dwipa, Plaksha Dwipa, Pushkara Dwipa, Shaka Dwipa, and Shulmali Dwipa. Descriptions were provided for the climate and geography of each of the Dwipas. The Vishnadarmatara Purana contains six chapters on physical and human geography. The locational attributes of peoples and places, and various seasons are the topics of these chapters. Varahamahira S. Brihatsamita gave a thorough treatment of planetary movements, rainfall, clouds, and the formation of water. The mathematician astronomer Ariabhata gave a precise estimate of the Earth's circumference in his treatise Ariabha, Aya. Ariabhata accurately calculated the Earth's circumference as 24,835 miles, which was only 0.2% smaller than the actual value of 24,902 miles. The Mughal chronicles Tuzukhaja Hangari, Ni Akbari and Dastarul Aml contain detailed geographical narratives. These were based on the earlier geographical works of India and the advances made by medieval Muslim geographers, particularly the work of Al-Biruni. Greco-Roman World Hellenistic Period In China, the earliest known geographical Chinese writing dates back to the 5th century BC, during the beginning of the Warring States period. This work was the Yugong chapter of the Shu Jing or Book of Documents, which describes the traditional nine provinces of ancient China, their kinds of soil, their characteristic products and economic goods, their tributary goods, their trades and vocations, their state revenues and agricultural systems, and the various rivers and lakes listed and placed accordingly. 
The nine provinces at the time of this geographical work were relatively small in size compared to those of modern China with the book's descriptions pertaining to areas of the Yellow River, the lower valleys of the Yangtze and the plain between them as well as the Shandong Peninsula and to the west the most northern parts of the Wei and Han rivers along with the southern parts of modern-day Shaanxi province. Roman Period India Ancient Period Early Medieval Period Late Medieval Period In this ancient geographical treatise, which would greatly influence later Chinese geographers and cartographers, the Chinese used the mythological figure of Yu the Great to describe the known Earth. Apart from the appearance of Yu, however, the work was devoid of magic, fantasy, Chinese folklore, or legend. Although the Chinese geographical writing in the time of Herodotus and Strabo were of lesser quality and contained less systematic approach, this would change from the 3rd century onwards, as Chinese methods of documenting geography became more complex than those found in Europe, a state of affairs that would persist until the 13th century. The earliest extant maps found in archaeological sites of China date to the 4th century BC and were made in the ancient state of Qin. The earliest known reference to the application of a geometric grid and mathematically graduated scale to a map was contained in the writings of the cartographer Pei Xiu. From the 1st century AD onwards, official Chinese historical texts contained a geographical section which was often an enormous compilation of changes in place names and local administrative divisions controlled by the ruling dynasty, descriptions of mountain ranges, river systems, taxable products, etc. The ancient Chinese historian Ban Gu most likely started the trend of the gazetteer in China which became prominent in the northern and southern dynasties period and Sui dynasty. Local gazetteers would feature a wealth of geographic information, although its cartographic aspects were not as highly professional as the maps created by professional cartographers. From the time of the 5th century BC Xu Jing forward, Chinese geographical writing provided more concrete information and less legendary element. This example can be seen in the fourth chapter of the Huainanzi compiled under the editorship of Prince Luan in 139 BC during the Han dynasty. The chapter gave general descriptions of topography in a systematic fashion, given visual aids by the use of maps due to the efforts of Luan and his associate Zhou Wu. In Changchu's Huayanguo Qi of 347, not only rivers, trade routes, and various tribes were described, but it also wrote of a B.A. Jun Tu Jing, which had been made much earlier in 150. The Shui Jing was written anonymously in the 3rd century during the Three Kingdoms era, and gave a description of some 137 rivers found throughout China. In the 6th century, the book was expanded to 40 times its original size by the geographers Li Yuan, given the new title of Shui Jing Zhu. China In later periods of the Song dynasty and Ming dynasty, there were much more systematic and professional approaches to geographic literature. The Song dynasty poet, scholar, and government official Fan Chinder wrote the geographical treatise known as the Gui Hai Yu Hung Chi. It focused primarily on the topography of the land, along with the agricultural, economic, and commercial products of each region in China's southern provinces. The polymath Chinese scientist Shen Kuo devoted a significant amount of his written work to geography as well as a hypothesis of land formation due to the evidence of marine fossils found far inland, along with bamboo fossils found underground in a region far from where bamboo was suitable to grow. 
the 14th century Yuan dynasty geographer Naxian wrote a treatise of archaeological topography of all the regions north of the Yellow River, in his book Hishuo Fang Guji. The Ming dynasty geographer Su Xiaoc traveled throughout the provinces of China to write his enormous geographical and topographical treatise, documenting various details of his travels, such as the locations of small gorges, or mineral beds such as mica schists. Su's work was largely systematic, providing accurate details of measurement, and his work read more like a 20th century field surveyor than an early 17th century scholar. The Chinese were also concerned with documenting geographical information of foreign regions far outside of China. Although Chinese had been writing of civilizations of the Middle East, India, and Central Asia since the traveler Zhang Jian, later Chinese would provide more concrete and valid information on the topography and geographical aspects of foreign regions. The Tang Dynasty Chinese diplomat Wang Suans traveled to Magadha during the 7th century. Afterwards he wrote the book Zhang Tian Shu Guo Tu which included a wealth of geographical information. Chinese geographers such as Jiu Dan wrote accurate descriptions of places far abroad. In his work written between 785 and 805, he described the sea route going into the mouth of the Persian Gulf, and that the medieval Iranians had erected ornamental pillars in the sea that acted as lighthouse beacons for ships that might go astray. Confirming Jia's reports about lighthouses in the Persian Gulf, Arabic writers a century after Jia wrote of the same structures, writers such as Al-Masudi and Al-Mukadasi. The later Song dynasty ambassador Su Jing wrote his accounts of voyage and travel throughout Korea in his work of 1124, the Xianhe Feng Shigao Li Tu Jing. The geography of medieval Cambodia was documented in the book Zhen La Feng Tu Ji of 1297, written by Zhou De Guan. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, ruled from Constantinople and known as the Byzantine Empire, continued to thrive and produced several noteworthy geographers. Stephanus of Byzantium was a grammarian at Constantinople and authored the important geographical dictionary Ethnica. This work is of enormous value, providing well-referenced geographical and other information about ancient Greece. The geographer Hierocles authored the Synctimus in which he provides a table of administrative divisions of the Byzantine Empire and lists the cities in each. The Synctimus and the Ethnica were the principal sources of Constantine VII's work on the themes or divisions of Byzantium, and are the primary sources we have today on political geography of the 6th century East. George of Cyprus is known for his Descriptio Orbis Romani, written in the decade 600-610. Beginning with Italy and progressing counterclockwise including Africa, Egypt, and the Western Middle East, George lists cities, towns, fortresses, and administrative divisions of the Byzantine or Eastern Roman Empire. Cosmos Indicoplusts, also known as Cosmos the Monk, was an Alexandrian merchant. By the records of his travels, he seems to have visited India, Sri Lanka, the Kingdom of Aksum in modern Ethiopia, and Eritrea. Included in his work Christian topography were some of the earliest world maps. Though Cosmos believed the Earth to be flat, most Christian geographers of his time disagreed with him. Syrian Bishop Jacob of Edessa adapted scientific material sourced from Aristotle, Theophrastus, Ptolemy, and Basil to develop a carefully structured picture of the cosmos. He corrects his sources and writes more scientifically, whereas Basil's Hexa Emeron is theological in style. Middle Ages
Karl Muller has collected and printed several anonymous works of geography from this era, including the Expositio Todius Mundi. In the latter 7th century, adherents of the new religion of Islam surged northward out of Arabia taking over lands in which Jews, Byzantine Christians, and Persian Zoroastrians had been established for centuries. There, carefully preserved in the monasteries and libraries, they discovered the Greek classics which included great works of geography by Egyptian Ptolemy S. Almagest and geography along with the geographical wisdom of the Chinese and the great accomplishments of the Roman Empire. The Arabs, who spoke only Arabic, employed Christians and Jews to translate these and many other manuscripts into Arabic. Byzantine Empire and Syria The primary geographical scholarship of this era occurred in Persia, today's Iran in the Great Learning Center the House of Wisdom at Baghdad, today's Iraq. Early caliphs did not follow orthodoxy and so they encouraged scholarship. Under their rule, native non-Arabs served as Mawali or Dhimai, and most geographers in this period were Syrian or Persian, i.e. of either Zoroastrian or Christian background. Persians who wrote on geography or created maps during the Middle Ages included Islamic world Medieval Europe Early modern period Further details about some of these are given below. In the early 10th century, Abu Zayd al-Baqi, a Persian originally from Balkh, founded the Baqi school of terrestrial mapping in Baghdad. The geographers of this school also wrote extensively of the peoples, products, and customs of areas in the Muslim world, with little interest in the non-Muslim realms. Sarab, a late 10th-century Persian geographer, accompanied a book of geographical coordinates with instructions for making a rectangular world map, with equirectangular projection or cylindrical equidistant projection. In the early 11th century, Avicenna hypothesized on the geological causes of mountains in the Book of Healing. In mathematical geography, Persian Abu Rehan al-Biruni, around 1025, was the first to describe a polar equi as a muthal equidistant projection of the celestial sphere. He was also regarded as the most skilled when it came to mapping cities and measuring the distances between them, which he did for many cities in the Middle East and Western Indian subcontinent. He combined astronomical readings and mathematical equations to record degrees of latitude and longitude and to measure the heights of mountains and depths of valleys, recorded in the chronology of the ancient nations. He discussed human geography and the planetary habitability of the Earth, suggesting that roughly a quarter of the Earth's surface is habitable by humans. He solved a complex geodesic equation in order to accurately compute the Earth's circumference. His estimate of 6,339.9 km for the Earth radius was only 16.8 km less than the modern value of 6,356.7 km. By the early 12th century the Normans had overthrown the Arabs in Sicily. Palermo had become a crossroads for travelers and traders from many nations and the Norman king Roger II having great interest in geography, commissioned the creation of a book and map that would compile all this wealth of geographical information. Researchers were sent out and the collection of data took 15 years. Al-Idrisi, one of few Arabs who had ever been to France and England as well as Spain, Central Asia, and Constantinople, was employed to create the book from this mass of data. Utilizing the information inherited from the classical geographers, he created one of the most accurate maps of the world to date, the Tabula Rodriana. The map, written in Arabic, 
shows the Eurasian continent in its entirety and the northern part of Africa. An adherent of environmental determinism was the medieval Afro-Arab writer al yais who explained how the environment can determine the physical characteristics of the inhabitants of a certain community. He used his early theory of evolution to explain the origins of different human skin colors, particularly black skin, which he believed to be the result of the environment. He cited a stony region of black basalt in the northern Najd as evidence for his theory. During the early Middle Ages, geographical knowledge in Europe regressed, and the simple T and O map became the standard depiction of the world. The trips of Venetian explorer Marco Polo throughout Mongol Empire in the 13th century, the Christian Crusades of the 12th and 13th centuries, and the Portuguese and Spanish voyages of exploration during the 15th and 16th centuries opened up new horizons and stimulated geographic writings. The Mongols also had wide-ranging knowledge of the geography of Europe and Asia, based in their governance and ruling of much of this area and used this information for the undertaking of large military expeditions. The evidence for this is found in historical resources such as the secret history of Mongols and other Persian chronicles written in 13th and 14th centuries. For example, during the rule of the Great Yuan Dynasty a world map was created and is currently kept in South Korea. See also, Maps of the Yuan Dynasty During the 15th century, Henry the Navigator of Portugal supported explorations of the African coast and became a leader in the promotion of geographic studies. Among the most notable accounts of voyages and discoveries published during the 16th century were those by Giambattista Remugio in Venice, by Richard Hakluyt in England, and by Theodore de Bry in what is now Belgium. Following the journeys of Marco Polo, interest in geography spread throughout Europe. From around c. 1400, the writings of Ptolemy and his successors provided a systematic framework to tie together and portray geographical information. This framework was used by academics for centuries to come, the positives being the lead-up to the geographical enlightenment, however women and indigenous writings were largely excluded from the discourse. The European global conquests started in the early 15th century with the first Portuguese expeditions to Africa and India, as well as the conquest of America by Spain in 1492 and continued with a series of European naval expeditions across the Atlantic and later the Pacific and Russian expeditions to Siberia until the 18th century. European overseas expansion led to the rise of colonial empires, with the contact between the Old and New World S producing the Columbian Exchange a wide transfer of plants, animals, foods, human populations, communicable diseases, and culture between the continents. These colonialist endeavors in 16th and 17th centuries revived a desire for both accurate geographic detail, and more solid theoretical foundations. The Geographia Generalis by Bernhardus Vernius and Gerardus Mercator S. World Map are prime examples of the new breed of scientific geography. The Wald Similar Map Universalis Cosmographia, created by German cartographer Martin Wald Similar in April 1507, is the first map of the Americas in which the name America is mentioned. Before this, the Native Americans referred to their land depending on their location, with one of the more commonly used terms being Abiyala, meaning land of vital blood. These indigenous geographical discourses were largely ignored or appropriated by the European colonialists to make way for European thought. The Eurocentric map was patterned after a modification of Ptolemy's second projection but expanded to include the Americas. 
The Wald Seemuller map has been called America's birth certificate. Wald Seemuller also created printed maps called globe cores, that could be cut out and glued to spheres, resulting in a globe. This has been debated widely as being dismissive of the extensive Native American history that predated the 16th century invasion, in the sense that the implication of a birth certificate implies a blank history prior. Geography as a science experiences excitement and exerts influence during the scientific revolution and religion reformation. In the Victorian period, the oversea exploration gave it institutional identity and geography was the science of imperialism par excellence. Imperialism is a crucial concept for the Europeans, as the institution become involved in geographical exploration and colonial project. Authority was questioned, and utility gained its importance. In the era of enlightenment, Geography generated knowledge and made it intellectually and practically possible as a university discipline. The natural theology required geography to investigate the world as a grand machine from the divine. Scientific voyages and travels constructed geopolitical power from geographical knowledge, partly sponsored by royal society. John Pinkerton appraised the 18th century had the gigantic progress of every science, and in particular of geographical information and alteration has taken place in states and boundaries. The discourse of geographical history gave way to many new thoughts and theories, but the hegemony of the European male academia led to the exclusion of non-Western theories, observations, and knowledges. One such example is the interaction between humans and nature, with Marxist thought critiquing nature as a commodity within capitalism, European thought seeing nature as either a romanticist or objective concept differing to human society, and Native American discourse, which saw nature and humans as within one category. The implied hierarchy of knowledge that perpetuated throughout these institutions has only been recently challenged, with the Royal Geographical Society enabling women to join as members in the 20th century. After English Civil War, Samuel Hartlib and his Baconian community promoted scientific application, which showed the popularity of utility. For William Petty, the administrators should be skilled in the best rules of judicial astrology to calculate the events of diseases and prognosticate the weather. Institutionally, Gresham College propagated scientific advancement to a larger audience like tradesmen, and later this institute grew into royal society. William Cunningham illustrated the utilitarian function of cosmography by the military implement of maps. John Dee used mathematics to study location his primary interest in geography and encouraged exploiting resource with findings collected during voyages. Religion Reformation stimulated geographical exploration and investigation. Philip Melanchthon shifted geographical knowledge production from pages of scripture to experience in the world. Bartholomew's Keckerman separated geography from theology because the general workings of providence required empirical investigation. His follower, Bernhardus Vernius made geography a science in the 17th century and published Geographia Generalis, which was used in Newton's teaching of geography at Cambridge. Science develops along with empiricism. Empiricism gains its central place while reflection on it also grew. Practitioners of magic and astrology first embraced and expanded geographical knowledge. Reformation theology focused more on the providence than the creation as previously. Realistic experience, instead of translated from scripture, emerged as a scientific procedure. Geographical knowledge and method play roles in economic education and administrative application, as part of the Puritan social program. 
foreign travels provided content for geographic research and formed theories, such as environmentalism. Visual representation, map making, or cartography, showed its practical, theoretical, and artistic value. The concepts of space and place attract attention in geography. Why things are there and not elsewhere is an important topic in geography, together with debates on space and place. Such insights could date back in 16th and 17th centuries identified by M. Curry as natural space, absolute space, relational space. After Descartes' principles of philosophy, Locke and Leibniz considered space as relative, which has long-term influence on the modern view of space. For Descartes, Grassendi and Newton, place is a portion of absolution space, which are neural and given. However, According to John Locke, our idea of place is nothing else, but such a relative position of anything. Distance is the pivot modification of space, because space considered barely in length between any two beings, without considering anything else between them. Also, the place is made by men, for their common use that by it they might be able to design the particular position of things. In the fifth paper in reply to Clark, Leibniz stated, Men fancy places, traces, and space, though these things consist only in the truth of relations and not at all in any absolute reality. Space, as an order of coexistence, can only be an ideal thing, containing a certain order wherein the mind conceives the application of relation. Leibniz moved further for the term distance as he discussed it together with interval and situation, not just a measurable character. Leibniz bridged place and space to quality and quantity, by saying quantity or magnitude is that in things which can be known only through their simultaneous compresence or by their simultaneous perception. Quality on the other hand, is what can be known in things when they are observed singly, without requiring any compare sense. In modern space as relative, place and what is in place are integrated. The supremacy of space is observed by E. Casey when the place is resolved as position and even point by Leibniz's rationalism and Locke's empiricism. During Enlightenment, Advancements in science mean widening human knowledge and enable further exploiting nature, along with industrialization and empire expansion in Europe. David Hume, the real father of positivist philosophy according to Lesek Kolakowski, implied the doctrine of facts, emphasizing the importance of scientific observations. The fact is related with sensationalism that object cannot be isolated from its sense perceptions, an opinion of Berkeley. Galileo, Descartes, later Hobbes and Newton advocated scientific materialism, viewing the universe the entire world and even human mind as a machine. The mechanist worldview is also found in the work of Adam Smith based on historical and statistics methods. In chemistry, Antoine Lavoisier proposed the exact science model and stressed quantitative methods from experiment and mathematics. Carl Linnaeus classified plants and organisms based on an assumption of fixed species. Later, the idea of evolution emerged not only for species but also for society and human intellect. In general natural history and theory of the heavens, Kant laid out his hypothesis of cosmic evolution, and made him the great founder of the modern scientific conception of evolution according to Hasty. Francis Bacon and his followers believed progress of science and technology drive betterment of man. This belief was attached by Jean-Jacques Rousseau who defended human emotions and morals. His discussion on geography education piloted local regional studies. 
Leibniz and Kant formed the major challenge to the mechanical materialism. Leibniz conceptualized the world as a changing whole, rather than some of its parts as a machine. Nevertheless, he acknowledged experience requires rational interpretation the power of human reason. Kant tried to reconcile the division of sense and reason by stressing moral rationalism grounded on aesthetic experience of nature as order, harmony, and unity. For knowledge, Kant distinguished phenomena and noumena, and he asserted all phenomena are perceived in the relations of space and time. Drawing a line between rational science and empirical science, Kant regarded physical geography associating with space as natural science. During his tenure in Königsberg, Kant offered lectures on physical geography since 1756 and published the lecture notes Physisk Geography in 1801. However, Kant's involvement in travel and geographical research is fairly limited. Kant's work on empirical and rational science influence Humboldt and at smaller extent Ritter. Manfred Butner asserted that is Kantian emancipation of geography from theology. Humboldt is admired as a great geographer, according to D. Livingstone that modern geography was first and last a synthesizing science and as such, if Goetzmann is to be believed, it became the key scientific activity of the age. Humboldt met the geographer George Forster at the University of Göttingen, whose geographical description and scientific writing influenced Humboldt. His geognosia including the geography of rocks, animals, and plants is an important model for modern geography. As the Prussian Ministry of Mines, Humboldt founded the Free Royal Mining School at Steben for Miners, later regarded the prototype of such institutes. German Nader philosophy, especially the work of Goethe and Herder, stimulated Humboldt's idea and research of a universal science. In his letter, he made observations while his attention will never lose sight of the harmony of concurrent forces the influence of the inanimate world on the animal and vegetable kingdom. His American travel stressed the geography of plants as his focus of science. Meanwhile, Humboldt used empirical method to study the indigenous people in the New World, regarded as a most important work in human geography. In relation historique du voyage, Humboldt called these research a new science physique du monde theory de la terre, or geography physique. During 1825 to 1859, Humboldt devoted in Cosmos, which is about the knowledge of nature. There are growing works about the new world since then. In the Jeffersonian era, American geography was born of the geography of America, meaning the knowledge discovery helped form the discipline. Practical knowledge and national pride are main components of the teleological tradition. Institutions such as the Royal Geographical Society indicate geography as an independent discipline. Mary Somerville's physical geography was the conceptual culmination of Baconian ideal of universal integration. According to Francis Bacon, no natural phenomenon can be adequately studied by itself alone but, to be understood, it must be considered as it stands connected with all nature. By the 18th century, geography had become recognized as a discrete discipline and became part of a typical university curriculum in Europe, although not in the United Kingdom where geography was generally taught as a sub-discipline of other subjects. A holistic view of geography and nature can be seen in the work by the 19th-century polymath Alexander von Humboldt. One of the great works of this time was Humboldt's Cosmos, a sketch of a physical description of the universe, the first volume of which was published in German in 1845. 
Such was the power of this work that Dr. Mary Somerville, of Cambridge University intended to scrap publication of her own physical geography on reading Cosmos. Von Humboldt himself persuaded her to publish. In 1877, Thomas Henry Huxley published his physiography with the philosophy of universality presented as an integrated approach in the study of the natural environment. The philosophy of universality in geography was not a new one but can be seen as evolving from the works of Alexander von Humboldt and Immanuel Kant. The publication of Huxley Physiography presented a new form of geography that analyzed and classified cause and effect at the micro level and then applied these to the macro scale. This approach emphasized the empirical collection of data over the theoretical. The same approach was also used by Halford John Mackinder in 1887. However, the integration of the geosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere under physiography was soon overtaken by Davisian geomorphology. Over the past two centuries the quantity of knowledge and the number of tools has exploded. There are strong links between geography and the sciences of geology and botany, as well as economics, sociology, and demographics. The Royal Geographical Society was founded in England in 1830, although the United Kingdom did not get its first full chair of geography until 1917. The first real geographical intellect to emerge in United Kingdom geography was Halford John Mackinder, appointed reader at Oxford University in 1887. The National Geographic Society was founded in the United States in 1888 and began publication of the National Geographic magazine which became and continues to be a great popularizer of geographic information. The society has long supported geographic research and education. In the West during the second half of the 19th and the 20th century, the discipline of geography went through four major phases, environmental determinism, regional geography, the quantitative revolution, and critical geography. Environmental determinism is the theory that a people's physical, mental, and moral habits are directly due to the influence of their natural environment. Prominent environmental determinists included Carl Ritter, Ellen Churchill Semple, and Ellsworth Huntington. Popular hypotheses included heat makes inhabitants of the tropics lazy and frequent changes in barometric pressure make inhabitants of temperate latitudes more intellectually agile. Environmental determinist geographers attempted to make the study of such influences scientific. Around the 1930s, this school of thought was widely repudiated as lacking any basis and being prone to generalizations. Environmental determinism remains an embarrassment to many contemporary geographers, and leads to skepticism among many of them of claims of environmental influence on culture. Regional geography was coined by a group of geographers known as possibilists and represented a reaffirmation that the proper topic of geography was study of places. Regional geographers focused on the collection of descriptive information about places, as well as the proper methods for dividing the earth up into regions. Well-known names from these period are Alfred Hetner in Germany and Paul Vidal de la Blache in France. The philosophical basis of this field in United States was laid out by Richard Harchern, who defined geography as a study of aerial differentiation, which later led to criticism of this approach as overly descriptive and unscientific. However, the concept of a regional geography model focused on area studies has remained incredibly popular amongst students of geography while less so amongst scholars who are proponents of critical geography and reject a regional geography paradigm. It can be argued that regional geography, 
which during its heyday in the 1970s through early 1990s made substantive contributions to students' and readers' understanding of foreign cultures and the real-world effects of the delineation of borders, is due for a revival in academia as well as in popular non-fiction. The quantitative revolution in geography began in the 1950s. Geographers formulated geographical theories and subjected the theories to empirical tests, usually using statistical methods. This quantitative revolution laid the groundwork for the development of geographic information systems. Well-known geographers from this period are Fred K. Schaefer, Waldo Tobler, William Garrison, Peter Haggett, Richard J. Chorley, William Bungie. Edward Augustus Ackerman and Torsten Hagerstrand. Though positivist approaches remain important in geography, critical geography arose as a critique of positivism. The first strain of critical geography to emerge was humanistic geography. Drawing on the philosophies of existentialism and phenomenology, humanistic geographers focused on people's sense of and relationship with places. More influential was Marxist geography, which applied the social theories of Karl Marx and his followers to geographic phenomena. David Harvey and Richard Peet are well known Marxist geographers. Feminist geography is, as the name suggests, the use of ideas from feminism in geographic contexts. The most recent strain of critical geography is postmodernist geography, which employs the ideas of postmodernist and poststructuralist theorists to explore the social construction of spatial relations. 16th 18th centuries in the West, 19th century, 20th century, Environmental determinism. Regional Geography The Quantitative Revolution Critical Geography Notes